In this tutorial, we will see a real-world example using ReLens, and in this case, the Kodak Pix Pro Action Cam. You should watch some of the other tutorials in the ReLens album first, as they cover specific tools and methods. We'll be showing a specific example and taking it apart to show some of the newer features that you've not seen before in previous tutorials. Let's jump right in and take a look at this footage we'll be working with that was shot with a Kodak 235-degree PixPro SP360 4K. So you might notice that this footage is extremely shaky, which makes it hard to watch. I went ahead and took the liberty to track the source video using the spherical stabilizer. Let me show you what I did. These steps are all covered in earlier tutorials in more detail, so this is just a recap. First, I add Superfish to my shaky shot. Next, I pick the method, equidistant in this case. Then I set the view mode, set circle over source, and center the circle. Set back to result, and then we set the field of view. We can set output size to comp size for now. It's worth mentioning that the comp output width and height don't affect the tracking because again we track the source footage. I can select the points tracker and select track. After tracking if I determine later that I didn't get a good enough result with the points tracker and need to switch to the patches tracker, it will wipe out the data for the points tracker if I start tracking again. So a good practice would be to duplicate the layer with ReLens as a backup. We can also copy and paste effects from one layer to another, and we'll see that in a minute. I just realized that I meant to set the field of view to 235, but it was set at 180 when I tracked. I'll get a one-time warning that changing source center X, Y, or field of view, or radius affects the tracking data, and to please retrack if needed. If I change any of those settings listed after tracking, I get this message. I can change to the correct field of view of 235 and retract the shot and render the result. Let's take a look at this render now and see that it has bumps in it, so I can show how we can go back and fix some of the keyframes like I did in the overview movie. Now we can go to the timeline and see the tracking keyframes. We find a frame where the horizon line is straight and adjust the keyframe location. We can check out the graph for the track that we just did by selecting the graph button. The actual tracking data is stored as a keyframe stream so it can be consulted as a graph. This might be useful to quickly locate in a long sequence potential areas of interest such as a jarring moment in the recording. We're just referring to the graph and then we switch back to the keyframe view where we can remove any bad keys and set new ones, making sure that a horizon line is straight like we saw in the Stabilizing 360 VR tutorial. Let's take a look at another gotcha. If I add any effect before Superfish and I go to Track, I'll get another one of those one-time warnings. Here it says, effects or masks above this tool will not be considered. Please pre-comp or track again. So that means we need to pre-comp if we want the effect applied before our track. We can just move this effect after though because it's a color correction effect and that doesn't have to be on the source footage. Now we will change the size of our composition settings. We go to compositions and we change it to 1920 by 1080. This is just to demonstrate that we don't even need to retrack if we change the composition settings because that changes the result or the output and we track the source. Now I create a solid that's 960 by 1080. In the case that maybe we wanted to do a before and after or an over under type of project or even a picture in picture effect, you'll see that you can use a solid to build any frame size you want independent of the comp size. So I can copy Superfish from layer 2 and paste it onto the solid layer. I can set the alt source from none to the mp4 file that I want in the effects controls. Here we'll see another gotcha. I can apply an effect before this layer again. Note, 
you can apply an effect before the layer without pre-comping if you've already tracked the layer following the comp. As I brighten the color corrector though, we see that it doesn't affect our image. So in this special case, because we're using Alt Source, we need to put the effect after Superfish to see the effect. If I turn off Superfish now, we will see that my solid is a different size. We can turn Superfish back on and set the output size to set to original layer size. You can see that the size has now conformed to the solid size, but now we don't see the people or action where we want it because the projection isn't exactly where we want it, but we can fix that. So the tracking is still good, but the camera isn't looking in the right place now that we have a narrow field of view. We can go to the set source controls and rotate around Y to bring our action back into view. Note, you can do this kind of camera rotation before or after the tracker. It has no effect on the result either way. I can animate the rotate around Y to keep them in view. So at frame zero, I can enter minus 49 and then go to frame 314, the last frame, and set it at minus 49. And then I go to frame 150 and set a keyframe at minus 11. And then to frame 75 and set a keyframe at minus 7. And then we can change the type of interpolation between those keyframes by selecting all the keyframes and right mouse clicking to reveal this menu and select keyframe interpolation and choose Bezier interpolation. Now we have a nice curve instead of a linear interpolation. We can duplicate this layer and twirl open the transform and reposition this layer to 480. On this layer we'll make it the before layer of the before and after. That's what I'm showing you how to do by the way. So we'll put it back to its original by removing the stabilized data. We do that by going to stab mode and changing it to bypass. Now we go to layer two and reposition it to the right by going to transform and making the position X to 1440 instead of 960. So you've seen how to use relens to project your layer onto whatever size solid you want and bypass the data on the left to keep it original. And then the stabilization will be rendered on the right solid only when you export the shot. This can also be useful for an over and under. In a side-by-side -side stereo, one would change the alt source to a different source than the first one. In a picture-in-picture -picture effect case from the same source, it would come from the same source and the same tracking. We would just have different rotations and focal length for one. So the point here is that we can copy our stabilizer effect with tracking already done from one layer to another. One last keyframe trick I want to show you in this tutorial. Sometimes you have a little jerk at the beginning or end of your shot from turning the camera on or off, or perhaps you just have edited two shots together as in the example I'm about to show you. You can see in my pre-comp that I have two different shots here. I made a pre-comp from that edit and then made a new comp, added relens, and I can go to the spherical stabilizer and select track. After analysis, there will be a set of keyframes for the stab keyframe setting. If we look at the graph, you can visually see where the cut is. Dominant motion is to previous frame, so you put a smooth key at the first frame of the new cut, and then go back one frame and add an off stab keyframe. Here my cut's at frame 315. Also, if there happens to be a smooth keyframe after, but near, like 15 frames later, you could slide that keyframe instead of adding a smooth keyframe at, at 315. This graph works too for the initial keyframe and lock, which will address that issue I mentioned about having a little jerk at the beginning or end of your shot from turning on or off the camera. So around frame 11, the dominant motion is near zero. So it's a good place to move the first keyframe and make it locked to handle the initial motion. We've just seen a typical workflow with a few tips and tricks to help you get the most out of relens.